Okay, all right. So what's up, dear Cyan? So hello. Um, so here we are again in another pre-recorded lecture in your uh, bacteriology class. And for this part, we're going to discuss um, the second specimen anato, which is your throat swab culture. Now, we have already discussed in our previous video the um, culture for the other swab specimens aside from throat swab, kato yung mga wound, imuhang rectal swabs, imuhang urethral and penile uh, swabs. Now, we'll focus now on the throat swab. So, this is a separate good enough presentation because uh, it's one of the common din na mga um, mga common na mga specimens na madawat sa lab pod, ang throat swab culture. Okay, so again, after, you know, identifying or after talking about the biochem, after talking about the different antibiotics that can be used against these pathogens, we'll now focus more on the processing nugget of specimens. So, if kani ato ang specimen, uns atong plating media, and then after uns atong gamitin na plating media, uns atong ma-isolate, okay, based on after gram staining, then after ana, follow na kasi mong procedures on biochem for identification, and then finally for antibacterial uh, susceptibility testing or antimicrobial susceptibility testing. Okay, so again, this is throat swab culture. All right, so we'll start first, of course, with a brief background about the respiratory tract. So because again, your throat <coughs> or your pharynx is part of the respiratory tract. Now, again, the function of the respiratory tract is not only to perform respiration, but also to deliver air from the outside of the body to the alveoli, again, where gas exchange occurs. So it's basically for respiration. No, uh, This is basic anatomy na ninyo and physiology. Uh, the gas exchange happens in alveoli and which aids in the respiration na needed sa mga cells, right? Okay. Um, and here is an example or here are your parts of the respiratory system. So, of course, we have the, we'll focus more on the pharynx, which is your throat. And it's divided into the nasopharynx, okay, katong uh, parts of throat na medyo malapit na sa nose. And then the oropharynx, which is behind your tongue, okay, or yeah, sa mouth, the pit, behind the, yeah, behind the tongue. And then the larynx, which is the voice box, okay, and then epiglottis, which is a flexible muscle that, covers the trachea when you swallow. So that para, uy, when you swallow food or swallow ibang stuff dyan, alam nyo na, charot. But so when you swallow, it covers the trachea, of course, para dili ka, ma, dili mo sulod ang food sa mo trachea. Okay, machoke ka. Ay, yes, machoke, charot. And um, your respiratory tract is divided into two major parts. You have the upper and the lower. So the upper, of course, consists of the uh, larynx pataas and the lower is trachea padulong na sa bronchi. All right, so um, we'll focus now on the upper respiratory tract, okay? Because again, this is throat swab or the pharynx, okay? All right. Ayan, so we'll now uh, also go next to the different barriers to infection of the respir respiratory tract. So what kind of cells ang naa? What kind of mechanisms does the um, respiratory tract perform in order to prevent infection? Okay, all right. So we'll start first with the nasal hair, of course. Um, Pag ginhawa pa lang ni mo, imong air, ay uh, imuhang nose, it, the, it's full of cilia or your nasal hair. And this acts as a filter. Okay, so filter ni mo ang air from the dust na imong, from all the dust na naa sa air, uh, unsa pa man ang mga materials na harmful, that can be quite harmful to your lungs. Alright, so nasal hair. Next is the mucociliary cells which line the nasal passages to the bronchi. So they mechanically move particles to the pharynx to be swallowed. So ito na mga unwanted particles. So ilahang i-move to the pharynx to be swallowed para may digest sa stomach because again, these particles can be destroyed by the stomach acid. Uh, preventing infection. Okay? Alright, next, of course, coughing. If um, na mga, you know, unwanted particles, that's another uh, reflex na mechanism or another protective mechanism of the respiratory tract. You cough it para ma-expel ma siya. Okay? Next, normal biota, of course, or normal flora, uh, it prevents colonization by pathogens. So, these are, again, normal bacteria that live within your, um, uh, within your respiratory tract. Again, ang ilahang main purpose lang is to prevent colonization of pathogens, which uh, serves up as a protection din naman from uh, the pathogens or from the infections caused by these pathogens. Okay, next is phagocytic inflammatory cells, still the same, ingests mga pathogens, uh, yeah, and unwanted materials. Uh, secretory immunoglobulins or antibodies, IgA, of course, basta gani secretory, guys, or antibodies found in secretions, it's always IgA, okay, so it keep antigens from penetrating further into the body because this, uh, this antibody will act to the antigen so para dili siya makasulod sa body hence preventing infection and defensins which are still mga peptides or proteins that uh, form 
uh, pores or ilang yung buslutan ang bacterial membranes para malice ang bacteria. Hence, para mamatay ang bacteria eventually. Okay, so these are defenses. So again, these are uh, the different mechanisms or barriers to infection by your respiratory tract. Okay, so after this, we now go to the different infections that may happen in your upper respiratory tract. So we'll start first with, of course, pharyngitis or uh, in layman's term known as your sore throat. Okay, uh, very common sore throat or pharyngitis. Inflammation of your pharynx or throat. Next, you have... Um, Sinusitis, uh, by the name itself, itis, inflammation of your sinuses. So your sinuses are hollow cavities and asa muhang nose the pit. All right, and there are different different um, causes of sinusitis. They may they may be caused by bacteria. Some are viruses. Japan. All right. Okay. Next, you have otitis media. Media. When you say otitis media, this is uh, middle ear. Okay, middle ear infection. Still, alaghan uh, ayong um, causes Japan's otitis media. And sa tung previous video on uh, uh, swab specimens culture di ba uh, naning otitis media and ang primary good na cause is uh, streptococcus pneumoniae followed by haemophilus influenzae and ang third good is moraxella caterhalis for bacterial uh, causes of otitis media and usually this is common a common infection in children pediatric patients okay otitis media uh, next epiglottitis of course so inflammation of the epiglottis and last is pertussis pertussis is um whooping cough okay so na characteristic parang sound na whoop like pinan ana okay niya niya successive yung pag cough ani again pertussis causative agent ana or it is caused by bordetella pertussis okay so we'll we'll look into that later all right okay so uh we'll now focus more jud on pharyngitis because this is the bulk of our discussion because again this is throat swab okay all right now again what is pharyngitis um so now we're going out to you know disease presentation and we are now looking into the most common isolate good and wala nang iba kundi sino si strep pyogenes and that is known as bacterial pharyngitis uh usually as yeah, strep pyogenes good um it's a really common infection pod and a common isolate among um mga na ay sigeng sore throat uh that's strep pyogenes or your group a strep uh, found in 15 to 30% of the isolates in school-aged children and less than 10% of isolates in adults. So it's still considered to be the most commonly encountered isolate in mga sore throat or mga throat swab specimens. And when you usually encounter throat swab specimens, this is the first organism that you are as uh, assuming that the specimen may have. Okay, ang strep payo, group A strep. Okay. Um, the presence of extra dates in the pharynx, fever, and painful adenopathy or lack of cough would suggest pharyngitis caused by S. pyogenes. By the name itself, guys, pyogenes, pyo, pus, genes, producing. So, it's pus producing. So, sa imuhang pharynx palang daan or sa tonsils mangani mismo, na kay makita na murag mga nana or pus. So, if na kay makita na in ana, that could be caused by S. pyogenes. So, pyo, of course, pyo, pus, genes is uh, producing. Okay? All right. Most cases of pharyngitis are viral, so most. Pero if bacterial mangani, kung pangutan ka kinsa primary or most common encountered bacterial cause of pharyngitis, then that's strep pyo. Okay, and so viral in origin or uh, viral ang cause, it may be a, it may occur as a part of the symptom of a common cold or early case of influenza. All right. Okay. Um, another causes or some other causes of pharyngitis are unusual na, and these may include Corynebacterium diphtheriae or an ACR gonorrhea, or other bacterial pathogens uh, with uh, in patients and isogestive histories, or in cases of pharyngitis refractory to conventional therapy, meaning wala na siya ni work sa tambal, conventional therapy. Okay? Alright. So, nasir gonorrhea. So, pwede siyang maabot. Dira, sir. Na naman. Nako, huwag nyo na itanong. Bakit kaya? <laughs> of course, that is due to um, that is due to uh, Oh my gosh, nalimot ko sa... That's due to oral sex. <laughs> okay. Nalimot ko sa term, char. Alright. Yeah, because of course, you know, um, if you explore stuff and you do stuff like that, then you just really have to make sure that your specimen, in this case, the whatever you put in your mouth, is clean. And wala agi yung mga, ano, dira, mga sabit, guys, ha? So, always, medtech mo. Medtech mo. <laughs> Nako nakakahiya naman kung ano magpapa uto kayo magpapa uto <laughs> sa mga ano diyan mga you know so basta always always examine your specimen <laughs> okay all right always make sure na if ever magani mo engage mo in any mga activities always make sure na it's clean okay and dili overused <laughs> 
Okay, charot, okay. Alright, so again, these are just unusual pathogens, okay? Alright, so ang pinaka-common yun nato na bacterial uh, etiologic agent for pharyngitis is strep bio or group A strep. Okay. Ayan. So we now go individually to the agents of pharyngitis. Now, we go now into their different mga characteristics. So parang culture, iyahang biochem, na Because again, ang atong goal aning throat swab culture is we want to really identify kung unsa ang impeding cause of the the disease, which is pharyngitis. So we'll start first with strep bio. The first one is of course strep, streptococcus. So it's gram-positive cocci in chains. Ayan. So this is an example. Alright, gram stain, gram positive coxine chains, biochem, of course, na mention na ni, di ba? Nag exam na taan ni. Sana naman ma na remember pa. It's catalyst neg, of course, because it's strep. Basi tracing, or taxo A susceptible, and PYR positive, or PYR hydrolysis positive. So again, these are uh, its defining characteristics, di ba? Recall, PYR positive, basi tracing susceptible, right? Okay, strep pa yun. Diyan sa kanya itong kasi positive for, or how will you, or when will you say na basi tracing susceptible? Any zone of inhibition, di ba? Alright. Oh, sana na-remember naman. Okay, alright. Again, most common manifestation is pharyngitis or tonsillitis, otherwise known as strep throat. Now, for S. Pio, mga good guys, uh, nabutang madali. Ah, okay, yeah. So, for S. Pio, um, aside from throat infections, makakos po siya pyodermal or sa skin, which is empetigo or erysepelas. Okay, please take note guys sa erysepelas. Because na ay another one known as erysepeloid. Okay, sige, mag-draw na puta. Erysepeloid. Ama, ang pa ala shocks wait lang. Ato nang erase. E ri se c erysepeloid. Okay. And this is caused by kinsa may nakakos ani erysepeloid ba? Makaremember ba sa inyong lecture? Okay, sige. Kung erysepeloid gani ang nakakos ana is si erysepelothrix rujopadi. Pero kung erysepelas Okay, that's streptococcus pyogenes. How do I remember? Uh, group A strep. Gets ra as. A S. Group A strep. So, unsa na erysepelas or erysepeloid ba ang group A strep? Erysepelas. Okay, kung erysepeloid, that's uh, erysepelothrix rujopadi. Okay, alright. So, pyodermal meaning it it um, involves the skin. Okay, now another is uh, we have what we call your necrotizing fasciitis, alright? So, na mention na ako, I think, sa first, ano pag yun, necrotizing fasciitis. When you say necrotizing fasciitis, um, yeah, flesh-eating bacteria. So, iyahang i-necrotize ang mga tissues. That is why your s is also known as your necrotizing, ah, uh, necrotizing is also known as your flesh-eating bacteria. Alright? Okay, because of necrotizing fasciitis. So, yahang patyo ng mga tissues. Alright? So, when do we, when do a patient experience necrotizing fasciitis? Example, na ay, na ay, na ay usaka person, nakasturya niya, okay, and then, nalagputan o glaway, example, na ay strep pa yo, ang yahang face. Alright? And then, that could, that could uh, lead na to necrotizing fasciitis. Alright? So, yeah, ma mag mag sana ma matay ang tissue magnana and then baho daw siya. Yes. All right, so that's necrotizing fasciitis. And also streptococcal toxic shock syndrome STSS. Now, another very important thing to rem remember guys is the sequelae or mga consequences uh, or complications of your strep uh, infections if dili mangani siya maagapan. Okay? So one one of that is the rheumatic fever. Okay? Uh, this is ang rheumatic fever mang good kay what happens in rheumatic fever is ah okay ang iyahang ang antigens na imuhang strep mabunang maapil siya ay murag mo transfer siya sa heart okay and uh, your antibodies will now attack the heart okay against strep if I'm not mistaken ha that's rheumatic fever and number one is acute glomerulonephritis now what happens is um, ang acute glomerulonephritis is kanang uh, the immune complexes, okay, form between the strep na bacteria and antibodies against it kay mo deposit sa kidneys, okay? And what happens is, of course, because of that, of the immune complexes na found sa inyuhang kidneys, makakos siya o glomerulonephritis, alright? Okay, so again, please take note of this two important sequelae of your uh, strep throat, okay? So, dapat maagapan judai ng strep throat, okay? Rheumatic fever and acute glomerulonephritis. May guna siya yahang duha ka complications, okay? Alright, so that's for strep pio. Again, the most commonly encountered isolate in throat swab specimens. Okay, next. We now go to, next one is Carinibacterium diphtheriae, of course, diba? Uh, Chinese letter appearance, diba? Under gram stain. 
uh, next you have also described as palisading, di ba? Palisading. Because tapad-tapad sila. Okay? And we're like Chinese letters. Again. Okay. Alright. Uh, next, uh, Gramstenia is of course again club shape, form. Palisades, meaning tapad or individual cells. Alright? Next, biochemical characteristics, catalase positive, reduces nitrate to nitrite. Urease neg, di ba? Characteristic niya, which would uh, differentiate it sa ulcerans, cryonibacterium ulcerans and uh, pseudotuberculosis, right? And of course, na mention na ni, iyahang metachromatic granules in yung batchmate si Babes Ernst granules. Okay, alright. I do hope na remember na. Okay. And for C. diphtheria, again, it's an agent of diphtheria. Now, your diphtheria can exist in two forms. It can be respiratory or cutaneous, alright? And in the respiratory form, it forms what we call a pseudomembrane. And the pseudomembrane is color... Um, tough gray to white okay all right um and the pseudomembrane is composed of mga uh, tissue necrosis mga dead cells mga wbc's put an extra date uh this uh, white pseudomembrane now if mudako ni siya guys uh, it could lead to the patient uh, developing you know difficulty in breathing kay ni, ni nasampungan na iyahang you know trachea and uh, respiratory tract so pwede siya mo lead to death and um or cardiac arrest if ever in anak kadi na siya kaginhawag tarong okay Alright, ayan. And for uh, cutaneous form, kay mga non-healing ulcers with um, a dirty gray membrane. So, mga dirty gray, mga hugaw na gray, yan, mga, yes, mga madumi na black, <laughs> sure, madumi na gray. Ayan, so, si Cranibacterium diphtheriae na siya. Okay, and it releases again the diphtheria toxin. And recall that, once sa tong test for that, katong in vitro precipitation test, you have the e, the ELEC test. Okay, alright, so Cranibacterium diphtheriae. Okay. Alright, ayan, that's for Cranibacterium diphtheriae. Okay, and I think this is also highly contagious, if I'm not mistaken, yata. So, kailangan po siyang maagapan. Alright, okay, and last um, unusual pathogen nato for pharyngitis is your nasier gonorrhea. Again, sir, ngano siyang abot dira? Nako, <laughs> wag mo nang itanong. Think about it, ngano daging siyang abot dira? Alright, because again, yeah, of mga promiscuous or mga you know, sexual uh, activities, no? Sana all. Saka joke lang. Okay, alright. So, first one is, of course, Nisir Gonorrhea. Yes, as mentioned, it's a gram-neg coxi, no? Uh, in pairs. So, diplococci, alright? Biochem characteristics, again, oxidase positive, catalase positive. Ganipod, very uh, defining characteristic niya. Please take note. Super oxal positive. And, in terms of pag-ferment of glucose, uh, ferment of sugar, on sa i-ferment? Glucose. Because, again, letter G. Alright, then glucose G, mura po yung hyperferment, okay? And also this enzyme, it produces hydroxypropyl, a uh, prolyl amino peptidase, okay? Alright, ayan. And, uh, yes, next, uh, and gonorrhea again is a leading cause of STDs and genital infections. So, example, urethritis, prostatitis, and cervicitis, and localized infections, pharyngitis, conjunctivitis, and disseminated infections, pelvic inflammatory disease, bacteremia, and arthritis. If dili siya maagapan, dayon. Okay, alright. So, uh, example for conjunctivitis, di ba, recalls ato ang katupang ano yun, um, asan ni, sterilization disinfection, di ba? Ophthalmia neonatorum, and unsa ato ang tambal anas una, that's Creed's prophylaxis, or gamit 1% silver nitrate, and it is now replaced by the antibiotic, unsa gani, erythromycin, dili dahil clindamycin, sorry naman, so erythromycin, okay, alright, so that's for agents of pharyngitis, okay, now for lab diagnosis, for specimen collection, okay, for for throat swab, of course, as you can see, kay kung gamit ta o, tongue depressor, alright, so that uh, dili mak makasagabal ang tongue sa pag-collect, and your tongue also contains a lot of normal flora na pwedeng makahinder sa atong pag-collect, okay, now, uh, for specimen collection, throat swab, again, dapat atong iswab, Okay, vigorously ning mga naa sa back, posterior na pharynx and tonsillar area. Samot na if na ay extrudate or samot na na ay murag na na. Alright, so dapat na siya ma-appeal. Okay, and you have to always remember that as much as possible, you do your best na dili good matouch ning roof sa mouth, kalid sa mouth, or sa tongue. Because again, these areas contain a lot of normal flora, okay, that this, that could hinder uh, in the identification of our pathogen, okay? So, dapat yun, uh, as, uh, as much as possible, kanilang likod sa, sa pharynx, okay? Diri sa throat, sa oropharynx, and kanilang mga tonsillar areas, okay? And if na extradate, dapat i-appeal yun na siya, na ma-appeal siya sa swab, okay? Alright, and after collection, ipot nato siya transport medium, samot na if, 
wala sa lab gi-collect, okay? Para dili pud mo dry ang specimen, okay? All right. Next. Uh Another um, specimen is your nasopharyngeal swab. So, sa mo agi siya sa imuhang um, sa imuhang sa ni <clears throat> mo agi siya sa imuhang nose. Of course, nasopharyngeal swab, and it's usually used for the isolation or for the, the detection of or recovery of carini bacterium diphtheriae because again of the pseudomembrane or like nama form dere. So, ang pseudomembrane guys, mura siyang, how do I describe it? Para siyang, yeah, pseudomembrane mura siyang thin na uh, skin or something like that po na pwede nang mutubo diri di ba so of course if dako na kayang sudo membrane pwede siyang maka taklub or makatakip sa imuhang breathing area so muna siyang pwede ka maglisod ag breathing ang patient all right and kani guys ayan luma kani good as in igawas ni sa akong boards <laughs> as in kani flexible calcium alginate so muna siya question a flexible alg uh, calcium alginate swab is recommended for the Recovery of what organism? Corine bacterium diphtheria. Nigawas ko ni sa kong boards. Ragyod promise. As in. Pero as in. So please take note. Ha? Flexible calcium alginate nasopharyngeal swab. Para asa ganin na recovery. It's for Corine bacterium diphtheria. Okay. Alright. Wag na mag -isip. Okay. Alright. Okay. Next, we also have uh, the nasal swab or nasal washing. So it's usually for pediatric patients. So atong iswab ang anterior nares. Okay. So sa ano? or mag magnesal washing ta which is composed of 4 ml of normal saline solution or NSS in rubber bulb so atong i-flush ang nose sa baby all right okay or atong iswab ang iyang nares all right okay and we also have what we call your nasopharyngeal aspirate um it's for bordetella pertussis okay so i-insert ni siya sa lungs all right so para mas makuha ang imuhang um you know, mas makuha ang mga plema na nasa lungs, nasa trachea. Alright? And ay plastic tip catheter, again, insert siya inside sa lungs na gyud. And then, dapat directly inoculated to fresh culture media at the bedside. Okay. Alright. But if dili possible, then you transport using 1% uh, cas, amino, cas amino acid medium, charcoal horse blood, or 5% serum inositol and fetal uh, bovine serum. Because again, bordetella also um, is... Uh, requires some special requir requirements so medyo fastidious siya i'm not i'm not if i'm not mistaken okay all right but as much as possible dapat ma plate siya sa bedside sa patient so tapat sa patient but if not then you use a transport medium either aning na mention okay all right okay now for culture um for culture again since we are really detecting for strep pio diba if we have if you receive in the lab uh, specimen na throat swab, alright? So, makain ka na, ah, okay, sige. So, the first organism that ato, ako yung ilok after is strep payo. Okay, so, since we are looking for strep payo, so, ato yung um, main um, plating medium is the sheep blood agar. And, uh, pwede po tang mugamit yung sulfamethoxazole, trimethoprim, this one is an antibiotic, blood agar. So, it's a blood agar na ay antibiotic because it enhances the isolation of beta hemolytic strep. So, Pwede man good na iuban na dili ra group A, na pa ubang other beta hemolytic like group C, mga ina na, alright? So, it's either again sheep blood agar good or this one, XX, SXT BAP, sulfamethoxazole, trimethoprim blood agar. Okay, so for plating, um, it follows again the plating of the other swab specimens. So, first uh, quadrant na to, atong i-roll ang swab, okay? So, you roll the swab, okay, dili i-push ha. So, for some, ano kayo mara siya i-push, i-roll na siya. Alright, so until you form a zigzag pattern. And then for the remaining um, quadrants, you now use your loop, okay? Uh, using multiple interrupted, okay, streaking, using your metal loop. Until mabot ka fourth quadrant. Fourth quadrant taha, Okay, alright. And then next, you of course incubate at 35 uh, to 37 degrees Celsius at capnophilic increased carbon dioxide for 18 to 24 hours. Because again, we want to... Um, we want to isolate strep pio, okay, or streptococcus na beta hemolytic. Then observe for characteristics colonies of again S pio. And if wala, you are incubate if such colonies are observed. And then, of course, perform biochem tests for beta hemolytic colonies using the workup for S pio. So, kato, PYR hydrolysis, basic tracing susceptibility, okay, oh, na. so of course, nantaw ni mong colonies sa S pio. And then, if you want to check, pwede kang mag gram stain. And then, if ang gram stain ni mo makita ni mo na ay gram positive cocci in chains then you now perform biochemical tests okay all right and make your final report so example um strep streptococcus pyogenes isolated after 
18 hours of incubation ana. So final report, uh, Chef Pyogenes isolated after 24 hours of incubation in ana. Okay, so that's your final report. All right. Now we go now to some typical colonial characteristics. Of course, for S. Pyo, small grayish white, transparent to translucent, matte or glossy, and of course, large beta hemolysis, large zone of beta hemolysis on your BAP. Okay, now for N. Gonorrhea, uh, small grayish white convex translucent, shiny colonies with either smooth or irregular margins. And this is, of course, N. Gonorrhea is for sa chocolate anger juna siya plate, di ba? Alright, and for Carinibacterium diphtheriae, small gray translucent to medium, white opaque, and some may be beta hemolytic. Alright, so these are just some of the characteristic colonial uh, morphologies sa imuhang uh, pathogens that may cause pharyngitis. Alright, but we usually focus more on the SPIO because again, muna siya, again, most commonly encountered isolate in throat swab specimens. Alright. Okay, so that's the end of uh, throat swab culture. As you can see, very, very short lang yun. Uh, because again, as mentioned, the major, major pathogen atong gina look after yun is uh, strep bio. Alright? Because again, it's the most commonly, uh, frequently encountered isolate in throat swab specimens. Alright, so uh, again, this is now the end of your throat swab culture. If you have any questions, again, feel free to chat me or DM lang or chat sa atong GC, okay? And I'll see you on our next pre-recorded lecture. Happy Nagyuta Mahuman. Last remaining pre-recorded lectures. Alright, so have a great day, dears, and keep safe. Thank you.